Devon. Devon, wake up. You are the only one I can trust with this. What? What do you need me for? It's the middle of the night. You need to come with me right now. I wouldn't wake you up if it wasn't important. Ludlow, just tell me what's the matter. I'll explain in Caleb's workshop. Listen to me, Devon. There is something in the galley. Something that's not supposed to be there. What do you mean, something? Are you sure it's not Undra? Does Undra often sound like a cat in heat at this hour? No? I thought not. I was turning the winch when I heard this faint wailing sound coming from the grate next to it. I had decided it was probably the wind when I suddenly heard it again while I was inspecting the bilge pump. But this time I saw something walk across the tween deck too. Seriously? I thought you weren't impressed by those ghost stories. Devon, I went down there and saw something going into the galley. Sailors aren't supposed to go in there at night myself included. I woke you up because as a steward, you are allowed inside. You can go in without getting either of us in trouble. So let's go. It was too dark to see anything. I needed a lantern. And? Did you find anything? It's too dark in there. I can't see anything. There's a spare lantern in the crew's quarters but you might need to refill its oil supply. There was a lamp in the crew's quarters. I just needed some oil to refill it. There was an oil tin in the drawer. I used it to refill the lamp. The most prominent thing about the galley was its giant stove. Four burners and two ovens. Quite lavish for a merchant ship. The cupboard was a mess. Someone had rummaged through it quite recently and left a trail of crumbs. The crumbs led out of the galley onto the gun deck.
I wondered where the crumbs would lead me. The crumbs led to a box among Senator Morton's furniture. Ah. It's a little girl. But who is she and what is she doing here? Do you think we should wake her up? How should I know? I've never seen this girl in my life. Let's ask her where she's from. No, please don't wake her. She's only just fallen asleep. Huh? Lady Tabitha? Excuse me, miss, but do you by chance know this girl? No, I don't, but... Well, maybe I do. A little. It was a few nights back. I was stretching my legs when I found her hiding underneath the piano. She was sobbing and I tried to comfort her, but I couldn't really figure out how she got here. Why not? Because she doesn't say a word. She's been silent for as long as I've been with her. She likes music. That is all I know. Why haven't you warned anyone about her? We are lucky she didn't. In my experience, the Protectorate handles stowaways quite harshly. Corporal punishment has only recently been banned for petty crimes. But trespassing, that is still a capital offence. But they wouldn't beat a girl, would they? I've seen it happen with boys. Why are girls any different? Punishment or not? If my uncle found out there was a stowaway on board, it would disgrace the captain. I don't want to be responsible for that. But what should we do then? She can't stay here. Not in that box. Can't Officer Lutlow take the girl to his cabin for the night? That way, we buy ourselves some time to discuss a solution tomorrow morning. Good idea. She can enjoy a nice warm bed. To think, she must have slept in this box for over a week now. The girl doesn't know it yet, but I think she's extremely lucky to have met you. Good night, Officer Ludlow. See you at breakfast, Devon. Hi. <sighs> what are you doing? Just give me five minutes, Undra. I'll be right there. Danielle, you know it's your job to collect the eggs from the coops. I'm on my way already, just... How do you expect me to serve breakfast like this? By the time you are finished, it'll be time for luncheon. Scarumba! What? Stop bossing me around. Let someone else do it for once, okay? Devon, stop staring and get to the kitchen right now. I'll be on my way, sir. Good. There's a pot of tea in the galley waiting to be served to Mr. Morton and his niece. Get to it, boy.
The dining tray contained tea for the passengers. Good morning, Devon. How are you? Good morning. Ah, tut tut. Good. You're a quick learner. Now pour me a cup. Uncle? Just something between Mr. Rainsberg and I. Now tell me, are you feeling well, my dear? Excuse me, Uncle? Last night you were out of bed, Tabitha. Can you please explain to me what you were doing at three in the morning? I... I was just... Go on. I'm just concerned about what you left the cabin for. I had to... go and empty the chamber pot. Oh, I am so embarrassed, Uncle. You cannot ask a lady to speak such a thing in the presence of a servant. Of course. The chamber pot. Then why did I find this kerchief on my piano this morning? That is not mine, Uncle. I have no idea whom that belongs to. I've heard rumours of someone playing on my piano at night. But you were in our cabin most of the time, weren't you? Yes, Uncle, I was. Reading. The Cry of the Children by Elizabeth Browning is truly splendid poetry. Drivel, my dear. So you would have me believe there's a sailor missing his frilly hanky? I am saying it might very well be the silk of a sailor's wife, Uncle. It can get very lonely when you are away from your beloved. And, as they say, music comforts the soul. Very well. I shall give this to the captain tonight. Let him sort it out. Good. Oh, and if you, by any chance, want to play the piano sometime, by all means, do ask. I would love to hear you play, Tabitha. Thank you, Uncle. Don't mention it. Uncle, my cup, it's chipped. It hurts my lips when I sip from it. Sip from the other side, my dear. My left hand is weak. I can't hold a cup like that. Besides, it's entirely against etiquette. Steward, take this one back to the kitchen and bring me a cup in pristine condition. As you wish, Lady Tabitha. And don't keep us waiting like you did yesterday evening. Tabitha had slipped a tiny note underneath her cup, asking me to meet her on the weather deck later. I see you got my message. Just pretend you are fanning me with that. For a moment I thought you were serious. I'm sorry about that, but you must understand I want to talk to you alone. My uncle is not a man who'd sit idly for more than a minute or two, so I figured we could only meet if I pretended to read here. In case he walks by, we just tell him that you were making sure I was well cared for. Right, but what do you want to talk about? Remember that my uncle found a handkerchief? Well, it's not mine. I'm sure it belongs to the girl. I've seen her holding it a couple of times.
You need to get it back. You and your uncle share a cabin, right? You could take it from him when he's asleep. Not possible, Devon. He even noticed me leaving the cabin last night. I need some sort of distraction if I want to do something like that. What do you want me to do, then? Tell the captain. I am sure he is reasonable. It's the only way we can avoid conflict. I am not sure if this is the best course of action, but I don't see any other options right now. It is better for all of us if the captain knows about this. He will take... What is that? It's coming straight at us! I need all the passengers to go to the deck house. Captain Hendricks, have you seen my uncle? In your cabin, Lady Tabitha. Go to him and take him to the dining saloon right away. It's safer there. I'll be on my way. Be careful when you take the stairs. They might be slippery. Rensburg, have you seen Ludlow? It's not his shift, so he's probably in his cabin. I need Ludlow, Rensburg. Go get him, now. If there's anyone still below deck, get them to go to the dining saloon immediately. Unless it's a sailor, then I want them to report to me. That's an order. The box was thrown on the floor. Ludlow's room was a bit of a mess. I wondered what had happened there. There was a necklace inside Ludlow's desk. It seemed to be a colonial design. Ludlow seemed to have sealed the hole in the wall after I had spied on him through it. Oh, thank God you're here, Mr. Rensburg. What's the matter, Doctor? Brunswick's wound is separating, and his body temperature is very unstable. Someone has to hold him down while I'll drain the pass. The officer's life is at stake. I'll do whatever I can to help, but you have to go to the dining saloon when we're done. It all depends on whether or not we do our job right. If we fail, I don't know if I can leave him behind. But let's hurry up. There's no time to lose. I tied his legs together with my belt, but you have to press his shoulders and arms down so he can make sudden movements while I'll drain the pass. Are you ready, Mr. Rensburg? Yes, Doctor. Let's get on with it. That's the spirit. Now listen to me, Rensburg. After I drain the pass, I will have to cut away the dead tissue as well, to properly clean the wound. Please, hand me the tools I need when I ask for them. I'll put them on the stool next to you. Listen carefully, Devon, and it should be very easy. Whenever I ask you for one of my tools, you will have to hand it to me. And please, don't mess up by giving me the wrong one. I need to focus. Ready now? Here we go. First, I need the syringe to drain the pus from the wound. So hand me the syringe, Devon. I had to decide if this was the right tool. Good, that should do it. 
Now I need you to give me the scalpel so I can cut away the dead tissue. I wondered if this was the right tool. I need to sew the wound shut now. Can you hand me the needle and thread? Gehrig wanted one of his tools. Don't forget to sterilize the needle by holding it in the candle flame for a few seconds. There was a candle on the stool. All done. Now, hand me the bandage so we can finish the job. It was one of Gehrig's tools. Brilliant, Devon. This went a lot better than I had expected. Well, Mr. Rensburg, it seems Ian didn't puncture any organs when he stabbed Brunswick. That's something to be grateful for. But you can never be sure. It might get infected again. I'm not sure if I can leave him unattended for long. And we honestly can't get him out of bed now. I can't force you to come with me, Doctor. It is your choice. Do whatever you feel is best. I think it's safe to leave him alone now. I'll go to the dining saloon. See you there, Rensburg. <laughs> 